welcome welcome to the new video um, I have been on YouTube now since October last year 10 months I've got 30 plus videos I still maintain that I'm a hobbyist photographer um, with an entry-level DSLR just trying to kind of work my way through the whole gambit of photography and learning as I go and as you've seen if you've followed me or you've seen some of my videos I'm a photographer of things so I was also um, looking at social media looking at YouTube I was looking on Henry Turner's um, page and he announced that his new calendar for 2022 is available and I like Henry Turner's channel I follow it I catch all his latest videos I add comments etc so hopefully that bumps things up and I thought you know let's support the guy so I've ordered my calendar and I thought well could I do a calendar what would be the topic for the calendar would it be landscapes now I don't get out I don't get out and round about I'm in Kent we've been in lockdown I can't go to Scotland I can't go to Snowdonia although that is on the cards so I thought to myself what have I got an abundance of and you know what castles I've got an abundance of castles in Kent and the bordering county of East Sussex so I've done myself this little map let's have a look on this map so we're going to start local here at Walmer Castle and then nip down to Dover Castle which is just a few miles down the road next on the list is Lim Castle now that's a wedding venue I might not be able to get a good shot but we'll see over to Sissinghurst which in itself is not a castle I'll tell you more when we get there then up to Leeds Castle so pretty such a pretty castle then we'll nip up to Upnor Castle and Rochester Castle. These are in the same vicinity, so I'll hopefully get them done in the same day. Then a little jaunt across the M20 down to the home of Anne Boleyn and Hever Castle and also Chiddingstone Castle. Then we'll nip across to Tunbridge, see a really old castle there. Then drop down to Scotney Castle, which is so picturesque. <laughs> I think you'll like the pictures there. And then finally into East Sussex to see Bodium Castle. I can't really do 12 photographs in July and then sell that as an annual calendar. That wouldn't make sense because you'd have 12 pictures all with the same, all with the same sunshine. But what I can do is kind of go out and set up the compositions that I would expect to take for each of the different seasons and each of the different months and then I can plan it I can decide you know what we'll use Bodium in winter we'll use Dover Castle in autumn you know that kind of thing so what have I got here I'm gonna zoom in just get the right buttress and I can just turn this it's handy So for the sake of this video, I'll take 12 pictures of the castles. There may be people in them. I might clone those people out. So I'll take two shots, one at f7.1. It gives me 101 1 125th of a second. Make sure I'm focused, by the way. The good thing with this lens, I've got a manual override on the autofocus. So I lock focus in and if I can adjust it with this. What I like, I can get it really pin sharp. So there it is sharp. A lady in a dick chair looking at the sun. At least there's cloning only these two people out. And I'll do one shot at F8. So using that pin sharp point. Did that look? That looks really nice. The castle was built by Henry VIII as part of the sink port. Um, embattlements back in the um, when would it have been 14th century 16th century 1500s and he instilled the chief warden or the Lord Warden of Sink Ports majestic looking castle um, famous 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 Lord Wardens William Pitt the Younger one of our Prime Ministers the Duke of Wellington and also Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. And she lived here, as did Wellington as well. Now this is a, a perhaps a nice aspect. If I could get up there, I don't know if I'm allowed to go up there. I wonder if I can get up there from around the side. I think I can. If we walk around here, 
Is there a footpath? Yes, there is. And steps. Woohoo! That's just what I needed. I was about to clamber up the wall. Actually, I don't need to. Let's have a look here. If we walk through here, it's a waiting game, people, because the, the view of the castle is lovely. I've got some people standing, taking pictures of lily ponds. So this shot, it's, it's a different aspect of the castle, but we've got the Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother's garden, which is rather lovely, splendid. Um, and this could be a summer shot because of all the flowers and everything. So I'll take a couple of shots here and and then we will move on. It's a question of whether I focus stack because um, will the lens give me a 18 mil? Yeah, that's fine, 18 mil. So it's f8 handheld at 1 80th of a second, which I can do. I've got um, vibration redu reduction set. Turn the polarizer, bring the blues out. And then what I'm going to do is zoom in a little and lose the first two hedges on the left and right. Very nice, very nice indeed. Let's just take one of the pond. Good, okay, so that's that. I think I do need to get on because I've got to get to Dover Castle now um, because I'm pre-booked. So yeah, let's move on. There I was saying, in, while I was at Walmer, Walmer Castle, that I probably have to take 12 photographs all in the same, you know, July, sunny. And then I get to Dover Castle and it's a sea mist coming in. Look at this. How am I supposed to present Dover Castle for a calendar shot when it's like this? But I'm gonna persevere because, um, you know, the, the objective is not to use these photographs for a calendar, it's just to get out and spy the location. But look, <laughs> I've just got missed. Oh, I might, I might even get one shot out of this just for the sake of the video, but that's what we're going to do. For the sake of the video, we're still going to take some shots. Um, these shots are not for a calendar. I'm just kind of sizing it up. It, it gives it an ethereal quality, actually. Look, if I can get the right aspect, you get the keep in the background just up there and then the, the surrounding battlement. It said that there was an encampment or a base, base here um, even before Saxon times, so we're talking Iron Age or Bronze Age. And in AD 43, when Claudius came, he set up the, the Pharos. Is that what it's called? Pharos? That's how it's spelt. That's how it's spelt anyway. But next to the church, just on the right, you can see the top of what is known as the Roman Lighthouse. And then William the Conqueror had his sights on the castle because it's, it's just strategically the ideal place to defend um, the country. I'm wondering, I need to go up here, set up the tripod. So yeah, in AD 43, the Romans conquered, they took it. Um, there was an encampment here, they had the lighthouse. The Norman conquest of 1066, William the as he was known before the conqueror. <laughs> I do like saying that to my grandkids. What was William the Conqueror known as before the Norman Conquest? He was known as William the. <laughs> New tripod, isn't it punky? The castle as we know it today really took shape in the reign of Henry II, so the 1100s. And it's been a strategical mil military post, certainly in the World War II, because they've got the war rooms. Okay, so I think that, that, that kind of works. Let's move it a little to the right. If I can just hang on for a moment and see if the fog clears and we get the keep in the shot as well. It's quite nice. So, so what have I got? Aperture priority, F8. 
and it's giving me one one hundredth of a second. Let's make sure I'm focused. That would help, wouldn't it? Yeah, that works. This is majestic. It kind of looks like um, inside the Tower of London. But um, Tower of London, Rochester Castle and Dover Castle all built with these Norman stones from William the Conqueror time. It lays claim to being the largest castle in England, but that claim is also contested by Windsor Castle, a place I've only been to once way back in, I think the 80s I went to Windsor Castle. It does look kind of ethereal and mystic in the mist. Transports you back in time. Mm, medieval England. Anyway, this isn't getting my photography done. I've got another castle to do, at least one today. <laughs> I, I actually love the video composition, although I don't plan it properly. I just, you know, getting out, doing the editing, all of that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, put the video camera down. Take some handhelds, put this away. Walk around with this around my neck. Just get a couple of shots, and then I'm going to head over to Lim Castle. I promise I am castle number three. <laughs> Well, people, the fog has descended on Kent. <laughs> well, I'm in Lim. I don't know if this is the way to the castle. It's been a long time since I was last here, but memory serves me that it's a, a narrow path like this that goes down. Is this the castle, people? I think it is. Lim Castle car park just up ahead. Yeah, we're in the right place. Careful, jogger. And the car park is shut. Typical. I shall find somewhere to park. I'm not really that interested in visiting the castle. It's the it's the aspect of the castle from outside that I'm interested in. So we'll park up and get the kit and then walk down to the public footpath down there. Well, it's cleared up a little and my SD card on my sound thing doesn't work. So, hey, just going to work for the phone, but this shouldn't take too long. So Port Lim Castle behind me. Um, I tried my hardest. I actually walked along the top ridge there and into the woodland as a public footpath. But it just kept going up and up and up and disappearing into the hills. And I couldn't access the castle from the bottom end. So I've driven down to the Royal Military Canal, which runs along parallel here. I can get a shot from here with my um, telephoto. Woohoo! So I'll take a shot, but actually, if we look here, I've parked here and I've walked along I'm here. I've got a lovely view of the castle here, but actually there's a public footpath here. So if I follow the path up to around about here, that should give me a good composition of the castle. So just up here past what's called Stutfall Castle, and the Romans built a fort here in 2060, AD 2060, AD 2070. So you can just see the remains, and I'll, I'll take some shots of the remains up there. So we'll head on up to the public footpath, see if I can get a nice shot of the castle. I was being a defeatist earlier, you know, I just didn't think I was going to access it, but even just a shot from here, this could be the winter one. And why am I saying that? Um, the 1979 album by Paul McCartney and Wings called Back to the Egg, great album. Um, he had a song called Winter Rose and they filmed the outside scenes for Winter Rose. Um, and then they filmed Love Awake, the song which is joined, it's kind of a medley, Love Awake and Winter Rose. And they filmed that on the inside of the castle. 
so yeah, a little bit of fame for Paul McCartney and Wings and Lim Castle. Of course, he lives down in Pease Marsh and America and God knows where else. I keep mentioning Paul McCartney in my videos. I will meet him one day. <laughs> that would be an ambition. Right, stop rambling. Let's get to that public footpath. Sadly, I passed the point of no return. The higher I go up, the less of a perspective I get of the castle. You can see it's just over my right shoulder there. But the higher I go up, everything is shrouded in trees. So back down I go and I'll take a couple of shots here of, what did I call it? Stutfall Castle, Stutfall Fort, the Roman Fort, look at that. There's the Royal Military Canal meandering through the, the marsh and the Roman Fort. So here's a shot of that while I walk down. So here's a possible for a composition. I do, excuse if I get any wind noise, I didn't have the lav mic this time. You can see the footpath there, and I just wasn't getting perspective. But from here, there was a gap in the fence, and I've just popped over onto the field. And I'll take a quick snap. Wind blowing, I'm trespassing, I don't like doing it, but I shall need no trace. So I'll nip back over the fence, and I'll be gone. Oh, hill climbing. Right, here's the shot. And we are now at Sissinghurst Gardens. So we'll walk down this way, I think. Sissinghurst Castle and Gardens with its own oast house. This one should be relatively easy to take a shot of. So I'm just going handheld. I'm not sure what I'll do for live view. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. What do we know about Sissinghurst Castle? Firstly, it's not really a castle. It's one of the stately homes around Kent, pretty much like Scotney Castle that seems to have the moniker of castle, but not quite a castle. There's been a settlement site here since the Middle Ages, apparently, and the Middle Ages are the, the is there any history in the Middle Ages? <laughs> um, but I guess we're talking Richard II and Edward III, knights in their shining armour, that's the Middle Ages. The land was owned by the Sackvilles, now they own, or did own, probably still do, although it's English heritage now, Knoll House in Seven Oaks, and um, Although they had lots and lots of land, the, the, the actual end final owner of this place was Vita Sackville West. And she was married to an author or poet called Harold Nicholson. And she didn't get the castle given to her in um, any kind of hand-me-down, what do you call it, the, the wills. But she bought, the, she bought the property in 1932 and they turned it into a fabulous garden. They've got the tower and that tower is what I'm going to take a picture of, but probably from the inside. And there's really only one composition that I think you can get without taking the aspect of the castle out of focus, you know, and, and making it all stand up, all um, out of well, perspective. That's, what, that's the word I was looking for, perspective. So even though there's only the tower to take a photograph of, this old property is fascinating. Mind your head. Oh, look at this. A mixture of the old and new. So the old architecture. Things that they found in the garden. Look at these coloured vases. They're pretty. be worth a photograph actually. Let's prop that down there while I take a shot. Pretty coloured vases. That's, you know that old song, these are a few of my favourite things. Coloured glass. Bizarre. I don't know what it is, I just love it.
Look at all of those bees. Is there a nest up there? I don't know if you can hear it over the gardeners. Thwarted by my own excitement and exuberance. I can't get up. It's ticket timed only. Damn you, COVID. <laughs> I don't mind, to be quite honest. I was just trying to pair it up with me being at the other side saying, and they've got a tower. And then I was going to be on the tower going, and look what I can see. Um, but they closed the garden off as well. So um, the best location for taking a picture of the tower, obviously, is straight down the footpath looking at it. So, so for now, I'm just going to take a picture of the tower as is, and that will do for today's shot. There's a little bit of the tower, and situate it a little on the right hand third there for perspective. We're not actually trying to take pictures as if they're prize winners. Got a bit of blue sky. 1839, it says on the weather vane. Look at that. It's got the focus working. 1839. Right, live view off. What I'm going to do is just take a series of shots and do some bracketing. So light exposure down to dark exposure. And I'll probably do five and they'll go one, two, three, four, five across the top here. So I'll shout it out as I'm doing it. We'll start one at, and this will be the bright one, f6.3 gives me 1 60th of a second. f8, 1 100th of a second. f10, 60th of a second. f13, have I done four or five? I'll do one for good measure just in case. f16, 1 25th of a second. Yeah, that gives me some nice exposures. So I'll be able to do a bracketing shot with these series along the top here. Um, and this will be the one that is Sissinghurst Castle. Right, I said that would be a short one and it was. So on to the next. Well, the weather's held out. Is this not one of the prettiest castles you've ever seen? Leeds Castle, not in Leeds, up north in Yorkshire, um, but Leeds the village, which is, what, eight miles, five miles outside of Maidstone, that general direction. Now, I did, I did read somewhere recently that, was it Kent Live or Kent News? They're thinking of changing the name of this castle to Kent Castle because too many people get confused, particularly because it's a wedding venue. So if you say, oh, you're invited to a wedding at Leeds Castle and people have actually gone to Leeds. Um, there's one story of a couple that got to Leeds. There was actually no wedding at the castle. Is there a castle in Leeds? I don't know. I might investigate that one day. But they'd actually got to Leeds jumped on the train, got back here to Maidstone, just in time for the reception. <laughs> so yeah, Leeds Castle, not in Leeds, Yorkshire, but in Leeds, Kent. Now, there's been a, 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 a settlement here in Saxon times, and the chief Saxon at the time was either called Led or Lead, which leads us to then make the assumption that it was his domain, Leeds, and he built a castle. Uh, the first castle was built in 11, 1119, and then in the 1260s, Edward I, Longshanks, if you remember him from, um, uh, what was it, Braveheart. So um, he bought the castle, and him and his wife, Eleanor of Castile, lived here. That was a marriage that was destined to last, you know, true love of his life. So. There are two compositions I can take for this castle. There's this side. Now where's north? North is probably that way, so south facing. Now the sun's going down there, south, south that way, so east is there. I'll get a wash of the light here, and then I'll take the camera and the gear around to the other side, and then that will be that. 
This is where I would probably benefit from a wide angle lens. At the moment, this is by 18 to 140. So I'm gonna to have to do a pano, which will incorporate the left-hand side of the moat with the bridge. To include that, as well as the right-hand side of the castle, I don't really think I need to go too far extreme. But I'm gonna do two shots. I'm going to do the usual landscape settings. Um, which is f8, ISO 100, and um, whatever the aperture sets, the speed sets, because the aperture will be f8, two shots like that. But I might just get out the variable ND, see if I can reduce the speed so that we can get the water to look more. Oh, that would be nice. So let's get set up. So that's the first shot, lock the focus in. F8, 180th of a second, ISO 100. Shot one, or will it be on the screen? When you'll be looking at it, it'll be on the right hand side of the screen. And then scoot on over, straighten it up. So let me get all of that in there, that's lovely. Same settings, F8, ISO 100, 180th of a second. And that's shot two here. So we'll splice them together and we'll have this picture. Would you just look at that, isn't that just splendiferous? What a glorious looking castle. That's the trouble being called Tudor. You kind of think or believe that you have a right to some of this. <laughs> I should have been royalty. I should have been born into it. But my lot in life is accepted. Four wonderful children. Five grandchildren blow me down, Governor, you've done well. So in order to get all of this perspective in for the composition, I think the best place, I can't really stand over there where the golf course is, but where this couple are stood at the end of the lake could give me a single aspect that will encompass the old gatehouse, which is in ruins, the bridge, the new gate, oh excuse me, I must be hungry, the new gate house and the castle itself. I think that you could see that the new castle was built. So the first castle, the Norman castle, is the slightly greyer section and then the Edward I castle which was added to would be the lighter stones. So with this expanse of lake, I definitely want to try and get a shot with the ND filter. So let's stop yabbing on. Let's get to the end before the place closes down. Another rather simple shot in terms of aperture priority. We've got F8. It's giving me one one hundredth of a second at ISO 100. And I will do this in two panos. So it will be shot one and then just a fraction slightly to the right. So two second timer, F8, ISO 100, one eightieth of a second. Very nice. We'll pan slightly to the right to get the old bridge and keep in. And I'm gonna do two shots. So shots one and two, two and one. Yes, <laughs> because I'm mirrored on the on the little screen there. I can't work out. If I was looking at that, I'd want shot one there. So yeah, shot one is there. Shot two is there. I'll splice them together. We get this pano. Okay, so that's Leeds Castle. Whoa, ho, ho. isn't that good? We're, we're cracking on here. 
I will have all the subjects for my calendar before you know it. Cool bananas, right, onwards and upwards. So in the distance you can just make out, I'll do a little zooming in, is the old castle of Rochester amidst all the modern industry. But first, before we head there, this is the focus of my attention, Upnall Castle. So Upnall Castle was originally a fortress built during the time of Henry VIII. And then during the Elizabethan era, Elizabeth I, she fortified the castle to make it a stronghold because Chatham was the site for the Royal Navy. So here on the river Medway, they needed defences. During the reign of Elizabeth I, not a lot happened here. It was built obviously because of the threat of invasion from the Spanish, the Armada, and also other European countries. But in 1667, the Dutch sailed up here and they sacked, well the, their intention was to sack Chatham. They were going to set fire to it. They captured two vessels and set fire to several, several others. Um, but there's a, a kind of a balustrade at the foreground and they had the gun emplacements there. So they were able to chase off the Dutch. And then after that, it's just a beautiful castle that sits on the River Medway. I'm going to situate myself up here, I think. So you've got a, a listed, it's not, it's not a building, but it comes under the category of being listed. And if I can, when that chap in the purple t-shirt's walking, I'm going to try and situate myself there and take a shot out across at the castle. So I should get a really good shot. But one obstacle are all these sailing boats. I might have to do a little bit of jiggery-pokery and um, take them out of the scene with some cloning. Let's see how we get on. I did go out on the pier but actually the boats are just all obstructing the view of the castle so I'm going to give you the live view. You can see it's rather lovely situated just in the middle of the screen. But I do believe I'm going to have to zoom in just to get the edge of the castle, like so. The, the less of the boats I can get, the better of the composition of just the castle. That, that's at 144 mil. I'm not going to put the other lens up. But that's rather nice, isn't it? It's just the castle, the water. So I think it's just waiting for a moment till the sun comes out again just to give me a lovely orange wash of the masonry and the stonework. Okay, so let's get into focus first and foremost. That's locked in. I will do some cloning to get rid of the edges of boats, leading lock wires and things and then it will just hopefully look like a castle sitting on the banks of the River Medway um, up north, the other side of the Medway there. So we're still in Kent and that's still Kent. It's not like I'm looking across at Essex or something. Okay, let's have a look here. Let's go into aperture priority. It's, I'm going for F11. That will give me a nice depth of field. The castle oh, is looking gorgeous. 1 60th of a second at F10 on ISO 100. Zoom in a little. Oh, it does look rather nice. I'll be, I'll be able to work with that, I think. Okay. <laughs> really simple one, that. What was, how long was that video? Two minutes? Three minutes? Um, I'm going to head over to Rochester Castle and we'll see what that one looks like. Mm -mm, two in one go.